All right, some some more dry stuff before we'll soon actually get to uh, the first fun part. Um, I'm gonna try to explain a bit um, how an operator is structured and how you can actually connect operators to each other. So I'm gonna, with the right mouse uh, button, I'm going to select all of these and delete them. And now I can, uh, as I showed before, just double click and add a noise here or any type of operator, but this is like one of my favorite operators. So um, what you have here with like uh, with every operator um, is that you have this parameter page up here, uh, which you can toggle and turn on off by with uh, P. And um, you always have like the corresponding uh, values on here. So if I change something on here, you can instantly see the image um, changing as well or w whatever content you have, depending on the type of family. So um, you can, what you can also do, uh, I'm going to explain that in a second. So um, you also always have these uh, buttons here and these buttons down here. Um, so what you can do is you can um, turn, like this is called the viewer. So like the, the part uh, here, so this is, in this case, it's an image. I'm gonna drop different noises of different families so we can have different examples. Um, and we're gonna need uh, something that's that it's based on. You don't need to do this right now, it's okay. Um, so we now have this uh, noise that's going too fast. <laughs> um, and we now have uh, always have like this viewer, as you can see, and we always have these uh, colored buttons that um, also, as you can see, they they're changing um, depending on what type of type of family we have. So we now have a sop, a top, and a chop here, and um, we always have these. So um, what they mean is, so as you, as I just said, this is the viewer, and here you can turn that off. So you can um, uh, when you turn off the viewer, uh, you can you can see a, a it uh, changes from the image or the the visualization of the contents of the operator to a free numbered uh, abbreviation of the type of operator that it is. <laughs> so this is this is a grid. I can change the name. It's always going to say GRD, and this is a noise, so it's always going to say N N O Y N O I. So um, I can turn this on and off. And for SOPs, this actually makes quite a lot of sense. Um, cause otherwise it needs to, uh, render all of these cause, uh, you, well, you can, you can see them here, so they need to be rendered. So, um, let's turn these off actually. Um, this I've, uh, I'm never really using and, um, this is not important for beginners. Before I explain this, uh, there's also this, um, this lock here. Um, if you click on that the the current um, frame is gonna be locked so um, if I connect something else here then that is also taking this locked image but if, if this was still moving um, this wouldn't be affected because generally and this is quite important actually uh, the flow of data is always going from left to right so left each of the operators has an operator input uh, on the left or not all of them have inputs, most of them have inputs, and all of them have outputs, um, and then you can can connect them um, to each other. All right, so um, how do I actually, like I'm gonna get to this uh, error in a second, how do I actually connect um, operators to, to each other? So what, what I can do now is use an uh, is just uh, drop an edge here, for example. I'm gonna make this uh, bigger. Um, and uh, <laughs> so um, if, when I just drop that, I can now left click on here and just drag this over there. And now it's connected as you can see. Um, there's also an easier way. You can just right click on this uh, output here and uh, drop in an edge then, or any kind of operator, really. And, um, yeah, so, cool. <laughs> uh, 
uh, what we can we might want to add another operator inside of here so um, there's uh, you do that by right clicking so if I hover over this connection you can see it gets yellow so um, and I can right click on this and there's two options here to uh, add or insert an operator so if I click on add um, if I just add a blur here for example um, I just turn this higher so you can actually see what's going on and then you can see uh, because I clicked add operator it added this to to here but it didn't like connect to there so um, to do this let's actually click on insert operator and um, maybe let's take a transform and just rotate this by 90 degrees and um, now that you see it's connected here and it's also connected to the next one so we inserted it in between of those um, for the add operator if I want to use this noise as a base for a second something I can also just middle mouse click here and use a transform uh, on this and um, I don't know change this to 180 and then you can see it's taken both the same in, uh, like base input but uh, we have two different outputs so this could be done as often as you want and now we can also just take this and drag that in there and it's going to be replacing uh, this one there's also um, things like a composite top where you get this kind of input uh, where you can just drag in several ones and they're going to be composited together so I can like I don't know average and then you get this sort of look or uh, I don't know subtract subtract I mean um, yeah so we're gonna get to that as well I just wanted to show you you can input as many here as you want to and they're always gonna be like added together and you also have the same with output sometimes and here you can see you have two different inputs and one says like background image and one says noise coordinate map and um, so you always kind of see what you're what you what kind of input you need to um, attach to all right so not to the bypass flag here uh, they're all called flags I think <laughs> uh, as, you, as you can see I'm a total pro um, if, if I uh, wanted to uh, see how this looks without um, well actually let's delete this and connect this again um, so if I wanted to see how this looks without the transform I can just bypass this and it just kind of skips this operator and um, I don't know I could do the same if I just whoops if I add another one here with right click um, I can now also bypass this and then it bypasses both of them and then we can just see in this case it's more or less the same in image at the end but now if I unbypass this and you can't see anything here anymore <laughs> um, or if I unbypass this as well then um, then you can see it's taking in, into account all of the operators in, in the line um, so how do we disconnect we can just drag this away um, yeah so we can do that or we can just right click on here and say disconnect um, oh, whoops <laughs> uh, back to the 15 so um, yeah so you can just drag there to discon uh, to connect drag this away to discon uh, yeah, to disconnect or um, yeah or you can right click on here and say disconnect all right so uh, same here obviously uh, you can bypass this and then we can just see the grid that we saw here in the beginning and without the noise in between um, also we have this uh, viewer active button down here so this is not very important on here so you, you can go around but it doesn't make a lot of sense so if you just went there you can press H we're gonna get to that in a second so that's a very important shortcut um, and um, yeah then you you're being you're gonna get back to the the data that's important you can also drag this around but this, it really doesn't make a lot of sense with tops most importantly um, 
we use the viewer active on subs and that's so on subs it's really there to so you can kind of look at the just with the left mouse button you can look at the geometry that's in there um, also you can do things like press W and then you'll see the wireframe version of this geometry um, and you can do uh, like with the if you press the middle mouse you can zoom in and out and you can also do a lot of things like I don't know uh, go to the display options this is very confusing in the beginning you can just turn on the points there and then you can see all the different points used and yeah so that's a uh, very useful uh, using this viewer active um, also this viewer active is important for uh, dats as I said so if we have a text uh, dat we can um, click on this uh, viewer active and then write something in there um, so like a script or something like that um, something like that <laughs> Uh, sorry. Um, so we <laughs> we can also um, go to the edit up here. So in any that you can um, uh, type something in here, but you can also edit whatever it is typed in there. So if there's like a long Python script, you don't really want to use this. You you can scroll down and everything, but it doesn't have like color and anything like that. So y <laughs> there it is again. Um, we can also click on edit, and then we're gonna edit it in a in an external uh, editor, like text editor, but we're gonna get to that when we're at uh, when we're when we're working with that. Uh, also, we have uh, things like buttons or sliders. I'll show a button. We can like if I I can't press this. If I double click on it, actually we're, we're zooming in there. So it's a comp, but uh, I can make this viewer active, and now I can use this button. So I can use whatever. I I um, kind of made in here, so you can see this is just a top in here with a couple of chops and a dat and this comp. Um, by you clicking this on this, we can now use whatever we we made available in there. All right, so um, I, I've quickly talked about this but this is one of the most important pages when you are like a yeah, very important page or part of an operator is the the par parameter page so, so as I said you can change the parameters here um, um, obviously you have the same thing on any kind of operator and um, also on, on the comms on some of them um, and uh, they're changing corresponding to the, the different um, operators that we're on so yeah um, the thing is about these uh, numbers here so you have always have like sliders and kind of like lists you can choose from so drop down lists and buttons and all that kind of things um, the thing is with these values here as you can see is going from 0 to 4 uh, 2 actually but it was just 4 so you can type in any kind of number here and um, yeah, it's gonna still do that. So Touch Designer really like not on a hundred percent all of them, but on most of these um, parameters, you can really change this to anything. Also like minus, uh, but it doesn't doesn't allow minus for this one. But on a lot of them, you can um, go to minus as well. So if I, if this amplitude just goes to ten, these are kind of the, they're just set by the developers so that because they thought I think that's how it went they thought this is probably a good base value to to be play played with but if I want this to be higher I can just do that and I think that's great because you can just kind of because you're free to do whatever you want um, so that's that's one important thing also there's a few other things here so um, there's the type here and then there's the name so you can either name an operator here so name here or you can like, as you can see change there so I can also change it if I just type it there and then we have um, all of these things um, these are not very important actually for now what's important is this maybe because um, if you click on that you now see only the parameters that aren't at their default state so if I just uh, right click on you say reset all parameters and click on this now it's empty because we didn't change any parameters but now if I change the period and click on that now, it, now it's there 
and this could also be interesting if you're using if you're looking at somebody else's uh, project then um, uh, you can just click on that and see what what they've changed also we have different sort of tabs here there's a common tab on I think every operator where you have basic things like p like the resolution of this so I can uh, change this to like uh, 800 by 600 for whatever reason <laughs> and um, we have some other stuff we're gonna get to later uh, things like time slicing I'm gonna explain when we get to chops and all, all those things um, and you can also select several operators and then change the resolution for all of them and um, also if you go uh, if you click on one of the parameters you now see these four different um, boxes here and the basic one is really just a, a constant, so you can type in, as I just did, uh, different uh, values in there. If you go on the second one, you now have the Python expression field, so I can do something like, um, and maybe not on here, it's probably best to just do this on here. So I could, this is a Python expression often used, so I can just say apps time dot seconds, it just gives me a time of the software that's constantly running in the background um, and uh, uses that for this like um, going through the noise space but you don't have to understand that just so you know you can like write Python expressions in here and then you can see this is being animated all the way through there you can look at that in the background amazing <laughs> um, all right and we also have like an export I'm going to get to that I never really used that either I basically just used this and we also have this last one called binding but this is mostly important for when you're using widgets later on all right so most mostly you just need these two or three first ones all right so I hope I've explained everything this time it's not the first time I record um, yeah so the next one we're gonna look at um, saving files because that's a bit special in touch designer and uh, then we're actually gonna start to do some cool st stuff <laughs> all right see you in the next one